Yeah, so today we're talking about conditioning and programming. And I think this is so important for us to talk about because it's the conditioning and programming that oftentimes derail us from our truth, from our authentic selves and from who we're meant to be, right? If you look back historically, everything that you've learned, everything that you do, everything that you say you like or don't like has an element of conditioning and programming towards it, right? So we grew up and become these adults and we're moving this certain way because of conditioning and programming. And sometimes the way we're living our lives is not authentic to who we truly are. And then when you're presented with something like your human design, you'll look at it and you'll say, you know what? This doesn't feel right to inform or to wait to respond. I want to do something different. This doesn't feel authentic. Oftentimes, it's not because the design type is wrong, but usually it's because we've been conditioned and programmed so long, and these feelings are buried in our subconscious, and the subconscious controls who we are. So when we see something, we're trying to analyze it from a conscious level, we're saying, well, that doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel like who I am. And it's only because we've been conditioned and programmed to think otherwise. So this is why I wanted to highlight this today. I wanted us to really be aware of where are we being conditioned, where are we being programmed? Let's create some awareness around it, but let's also understand that once I look at past it from a conscious level, once I tap into the instinct, once I experiment with it, and once I shift how I feel subconsciously, that's how I really begin to start to align with who I truly am and who I'm meant to be, right? So let's take it right from the top, and I want to define what does it mean, conditioning and programming, like what do we mean by conditioning and programming? So conditioning can be defined as a behavioral process where the response becomes more frequent or more predictable in a given environment. So simply put, what that means is conditioning is when a desired response is reinforced to the point where the behavior becomes so predictable or so frequent, right? Any behavior that you do from the point you wake up in the morning to the time you go to bed is habit. And that habit has been reinforced, right? And this is part of conditioning. So the truth of the matter is this, when you come to this world, you enter as a blank canvas, right? Untainted, unconditioned, but you quickly realize that in order for me to receive the love and support and acceptance from my parents, I should conform. And in order for me to fit into social norms, so I feel accepted, I should also conform. And in order for me to be successful, again, I should conform to the institutional structures that have laid out this process of success. You know, so as a result, we end up in careers that don't make us happy, but we stay because maybe our parents will be happy or our family will be happy. And you can see conditioning and programming at play, right? We're constantly chasing the job, the title, the monetary things, because we've been told by following this script, we will be happy. So a lot of us are doing this blindly. And then oftentimes the culture within the work environment is you need to work hard. You need to constantly be available. You need to push. You need to press. You need to grind. You need to hustle. So we subscribe to this belief because we're told, okay, well, my neighbor's doing it and everyone else is doing it. So the culture is within the culture is supporting this belief. So I subscribe to this and this leads to burnout, frustration, overwhelm. And this is why we want to shed a light on this today. A lot oftentimes we're aligning with things, and I know I have, that are not our truth. But we do it because we've been doing this from the beginning of time. We've created this habit. And you don't only see this in the work environment. You also see this in relationships where we overextend ourselves and we don't set boundaries because, again, I need to constantly be available. I need to do as much as I can because this is where I derive my value. So, again, we're shedding light on this today because we really want to create awareness around where we're being conditioned. And if it doesn't feel authentic to us, then perhaps it's time for us to pivot, shift, and change. I want to give some insight and examples as to conditioning and how long this has been occurring. If anyone is familiar with Pavlov, you know, in his theory of classical conditioning, he was able to make a dog salivate on command, right? He would bring a dog meat, which is this reward, and simultaneously ring a bell, which is the stimuli. And what he noticed is that when he removed the meat and he would just ring the bell, the dog would salivate causing this conditioned response. And what's happening here is Pavlov is teaching the dog how to salivate by the sound of a bell. And I mentioned the theory of classical conditioning because my question is, where does this theory of classical conditioning apply to you? Where are you chasing this reward? And maybe the reward is happiness and the stimulus is a work culture that doesn't make you happy, but we've been conditioned to believe that, subscribe to this culture and you will receive this reward of happiness. And when they take the happiness away, we stay because they've paired, we've paired 
happiness to the work culture. So whether we get happy or not, we won't even notice it. And that's what conditioning does, right? In Pavlov's theory, and bear with me for a sec, because I know I'm talking about this for a bit, but you take the meat away, when you ring the bell, the dog will still salivate. Whether he gets the meat or not, it becomes a moot point. The dog has now been conditioned. I'm not saying that we're dogs here or anything like that, but I am saying that sometimes the power of conditioning really is able to see past this and we can't see how it's the impact that it's having on us. We all want to be happy at the end of the day. And it's almost like people exploit that happiness and they create this culture where we're doing things that don't align with us authentically, but we do it because we want to be happy. And whether we achieve this happiness or not, at the end of the day, it, it becomes irrelevant because we've paired what we want with the stimuli, thinking and believing that it's going to make us happy. And oftentimes, that's why so many of us go in the wrong direction in life, because we're conditioned and programmed to, to do something that we don't necessarily want to do. When I look at the conditioning, I see this as a real issue. And when you believe that a stimuli or a reward, be it success, be it money, be validation, praise from your peers or family or friends, when that reward outweighs the burnout, the overwhelm, the frustration and the bitterness and the unhappiness that you are experiencing, this is when you're out of alignment and this is when you're living in your conditioning. And when you are living in your conditioning, life is going to feel messy. You're not living in your truth. And when you're living in your conditioning, you're living on autopilot or you're living in fear, right? And, and if everything that you stand for, if your foundation is built on fear, how long can you withstand the pressures that life is gonna throw at you? Right, one can only withhold these pressures for so long. And that's why I think it's cool that we are constantly given signs, symbols, and synchronicities to show that we're out of alignment, right? When you experience burnout and frustration and overwhelm and things of that nature, at face value, you can look at them and say, these are negative things. But what it is, it's the universe, it's your body, it's your instinct, it's your being guiding you and just saying, hey, something isn't right here. So we need to shift, we need to pivot, and we need to park the way we're doing things. You know, I even look at mild forms as depression. Like when you're depressed, you don't want to do anything. You want to stop and you don't want to do anything. And all it's really saying is like what you've been doing is not working, right? The distracting behavior, the toxic behavior, whatever you're doing that's not in alignment for you, that you continue to repeat over and over again, is not working for you. Right. So it's also about us paying attention to the signposts and not ignoring them anymore. The signposts that we experience are also telling us that we are living out of alignment and we can no longer move from a place where we ignore the signposts and symptoms. Right. It's the conditioning that has taught us that if you're feeling discomfort, if you're feeling stress, just fight through it. It's the conditioning that has created this high correlation between success and stress. And they said that, well, if you're feeling stress, that's okay, because that's the recipe to success, right? They dangle this stimulus of money and happiness in front of us. And they convince us that, you know what, all the ailments, all the symptoms that you're feeling, the stress, the overwhelm, the anxiety, that's okay. And we have to realize that it's not. In order for us to remove the veil of conditioning that has us living in alignment, we need to take a step back. Because as you take a step back, you raise your awareness and you see things as they are. You almost pierce through this veil of conditioning and you realize that how I was living is not authentic, nor is it right for me, right? My truth, my higher self, the way I'm meant to live is very different than the way I've been living. This is the process of deconditioning, right? It's the awareness is the key piece. The awareness to see that, okay, perhaps this is what's being presented to me, but this is not necessarily how I have to live. And although that they're saying this is the way I'll receive, achieve success, this is not how I define success. It's when we get to that point that we begin to really start to take control of our lives and we begin that process of deconditioning. You know, and this is a difficult process because when you be conditioned and you're constantly repeating a behavior, you believe that you're choosing it on your own accord, right? So when you're part of a work culture that no one takes time off and you work on your vacations, and you're constantly giving yourself and you're lacking sleep, you're constantly pushing and you're constantly grinding, you will tell yourself, no, I love working long hours. I really enjoy working on the weekends. I like being productive, right? You've correlated productive with working as much as you need to work. 
you fail to create boundaries, but you say this is okay because you say, you know what, I like to go over and above. I like to go above and beyond. I like to make myself available. I never like to say no. I want to make sure that I can always find an answer and always find a solution. You know, we've paired lack of boundaries with being efficient. So now I value myself because I don't have any time for myself. I value myself because I have no boundaries. I value myself because I'm constantly giving to others before I give myself to myself, right? And it's like, if we fail to really look at what this is reflecting back to us, we will constantly be in this mode of conditioning, but we will also feel like, hey, we're voluntarily choosing these things because we want to choose these things. And that's the, that's the thing about conditioning. It has a way of just kind of slithering into your ear and whispering and making you believe that this is the way you should live when the action we shouldn't be. You know, when you begin the process of deconditioning, we begin to move down the path towards our highest potential. And as we venture down this path, we begin to experience life with ease and with flow, right? We're no longer swimming against the stream, but we're going with the stream. And as we follow our internal guidance, we will notice that people, places, and circumstances will attune to our frequency and they'll help us on this journey as we move towards our destiny. You know, and this is a process. This is not something that happens overnight. You don't just wake up one day and be like, oh, I'm free, freedom. Um, you're constantly doing things to help you decondition yourself and really shift the way you view things, right? And we also have to give ourselves time, give ourselves patience, know that I've been living a certain way for 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years for some of us. So to shift those beliefs and shift those values will take time. So it's also about being patient with yourself. And there's a lot of things that you can do. Affirmations are a great way to start to positively shift your beliefs, changing how you feel at a subconscious level, really auto affirmations, hypnotherapy, are another great tool to really change your subconscious beliefs meditation finding times to sit with yourself and meditate finding time to listen to your true voice your inner voice not the noise that's constantly coming from us from institutions our religious institutions educational institutions our friends our parents our culture etc there's constantly message social media there's constantly messages coming towards us but sometimes it's about learning to silence the noise right your mind wants to constantly think and solve things it's a tool it's about quieting the mind, tapping into your true self, your inner self, understanding what feels right for me, despite the messaging that I'm hearing, what feels authentically right for me? What am I being pulled towards? Because usually that is what's right for you. And that's the beauty of human design. Human design provides us with the roadmap of your aura, right? Your unique energetic blueprint. And when you understand your energy and where you open to conditioning, you begin to navigate this energetic plane in a way that creates the least amount of resistance for you. And this is why I love human design, because it's when you adopt human design or when you really embrace your strategy, you radically shift the way you've been living and you begin to redefine yourself as more whole. You see yourself as more whole and you understand that the way I'm meant to navigate this plane, the way I'm meant to live my life and the way I'm meant to make decisions does not necessarily need to match the way my neighbor makes decisions or the way my parents made decisions. It's different. So I can define how I create success and how I make success. So when, when I look at human design, one of the things that I think it does is it gives you the vocabulary to express who you are, right? It gives you this permission to be who you are and who you've always meant to be. And now you can creatively express it because through human design, it's like it's activated something in you. And you also have the verbiage to express it and articulate who you are. And to me, the knowledge, there's power, there's wisdom there, right? When I look at places like the workforce, employers and employees, you know, if you knew your employees design, you can nurture that skill set so they could blossom and they can grow. Rather than trying to fit our employees into this box and say, okay, well, so-and-so had this solution, so why don't you follow the same steps as someone else? It's actually being able to see that person for who they are. I see you. I see your strengths. And I see your weaknesses. And let's put you in a place that really you can really excel and you can become the best that you can be. You look at parents and children. So often as parents, yes, there's good intentions there. But you may suppress your child's gifts and talents because you want your child to be like you. You may say suppress their gifts and talents because 
you want them to be like their siblings, but they're not like their siblings. They have gifts, they have talents. And what the child does sometimes is the child will suppress what they truly want because they know that if I don't do what my parents want, I won't make them happy. So I'll stop doing the things that I desire to do. I'll suppress them, I'll put them away. I'll pack them up neatly and I'll never look at them again because I know this will make mom and dad happy. But are we allowing that child to truly express who they are and who they're meant to be in this world, who they're meant to help, how they're meant to act and provide acts of service? I understand, again, as parents, you always want the best for your children. But we're basing that on our experiences and what we know historically. And I think we need to guide our children, but we're also responsible for seeing their gifts and seeing their talents and not suppressing them, nurturing them. Understanding their human design allows you to see that. It gives you line of sight so you can know, okay, my child is a manifester and they're meant to forge and they're meant to be independent and they're meant to have a voice. And this is when they're in their creative space. So rather than hindering it and stopping it, I want to nurture it and create room for them to grow. So first thing we want to do is we want to start at the beginning. And when you use your human design, you want to pull up your chart. And then you want to take a look at your strategy and authority, as well as the openness in your chart. And this will give you an understanding of the potential areas of conditioning and how it would appear if you were living out of alignment. You know, in the human design, each type has its own characteristics. And when you understand the characteristics of your type, you would know if you're in alignment or not. Now, secondly, we have nine energy centers that are either defined and colored with consistent energy or undefined and white without consistent energy. This will determine how your energy flows in your chart and where you are more likely to experience conditioning from others. So as you learn about a human design, there are a few things that you want to do, right? First thing is understanding your human design is going to give you awareness, right? That awareness is number one. Now I know I have an understanding of my human design chart. Then I want to understand what is my strategy and what is my authority? What is my decision making process for my energy and for my aura? And I want to start experimenting with that. I also want to be aware of where am I open to conditioning, right? We understand now that we're constantly being conditioned from society, from our parents, from our upbringing, from so many different sources and places. So where am I open to conditioning? You know, where am I most acceptable to conditioning? And because once you understand that, you have a line of sight and you can pay attention to that. And then what you want to start doing is paying attention to your intuition, pay attention to your intuitive voice, pay attention to the way you're meant to make decisions. When you're in um, situations where it feels, you know, I want to be authentic to my human design, but something about this doesn't feel right. It's a matter of paying attention to it. It's also about understanding that if I'm open to conditioning, maybe my conditioning is influenced how I'm experiencing something. Maybe my conditioning is influencing why I don't feel comfortable responding to life and I feel like I have to initiate. Maybe my conditioning is influenced why I feel uncomfortable when I have to inform people of things, right? And, and I feel like I don't want to inform people of things. Maybe my conditioning is influencing why I feel uncomfortable waiting for an invitation. And I feel like I just want to move forward and just forge the way and I don't want to wait for an invitation, right? These are, neg these are not negative things when we need to look at them. It's just an energetic makeup of who we are. So understanding our conditioning and where we're open to conditioning will give reason and explanation as to why we feel uncomfortable in certain situations. You know, as you learn about your human design, you're going to gain awareness. And this is the first step in detaching yourself from conditioning. And as you continue to learn about your human design, you're going to begin to realize that you also have decision making process that is right for you, right? They are specific to your design. Therefore, you were never meant to act like everyone or do what everyone does. Your path has always been to align with yourself. And the more you align with your design, you'll notice that it's inviting you to trust your inner voice and focus on who you are so you can recognize your personal truth. You know, when you when you start to live your human design, everything changes. Your vibration changes, your frequency changes, your aura changes, and you start to attract the right people, places, and circumstances that lead you towards your personal growth. It's an empowering process. It's a liberating process. And I remember when I first started tapping into my human design, like many, I just noticed I was aware that a lot of the things that I was learning about, some of it resonated with me, you know, and it was uncomfortable to fully step into it. But I also couldn't deny 
that a lot of it resonated with me. And as I stepped into my human design, it really gave me this permission to be who I am. It's almost validated a lot of the things that I was doing in my life where I felt like maybe I wasn't living in alignment or maybe the path seemed harder than it needed to be. But through my design, I understand it gave me this permission slip to be like, hey, these are strengths and these are the reasons why your path has been the way it has been. Now, understand your aura, understand your energy, and you can really create magnificent change in your life. And that's what I started to do. I really started to embrace my design, understand where I've been open to conditioning so I can start the process of deconditioning. You know what you know, and you don't know what you don't know. And when you have knowledge, you can apply it. You experiment and through experimentation, you have wisdom because you understand now how to navigate this energetic plane with your design. Everything is energy. And that's why I talked about vibration. You know, when we don't know this, we don't are not aware of our design. Life can feel like you're constantly bumping into things. Life can feel turbulent. Life can feel that you're constantly getting the short end of the stick. And life can feel like it needs to be hard and difficult. When you understand your energy, when you understand your human design, life shifts. And when people talk about a flow state, you really begin to step into a state of flow. You really begin to move with a different amount of awareness. You don't see obstacles as obstacles. Obstacles are really guidance. You don't see challenge and misfortune as problematic, but you see as energetic shifts that are meant to guide you in the right position. As long as you're aligning with your truth and your higher self, you're constantly moving in the right direction. When we don't know this, and we're misalignment, that's when life can feel difficult because what we're doing is we're not listening to ourself, we're listening to the messages that are constantly coming to us. You should be this, you should be that. This is what success will look like. This is what achievement looks like. This is how you define your success. This is how you should value yourself. And you notice if you, if you take a moment and you look at it, everything is telling you to reach outside yourself so you can achieve this happiness and success right? It's that classical conditioning model. And it works so well that we do it automatically. But when you understand that by not knowing my human design, I'm living in autopilot. I'm living in this hypnotized humanity. I'm not seeing what's necessary for me to see. When you understand that, you can make the decision to decondition yourself, step back from the conditioning and really understand that as I step into my truth, as I understand my energy, as I shift, I really, really begin to step into who I'm, who I am, who I'm meant to be. It's a beautiful process because that's when you wake up and that's when you lift the veil and that's when you actually see what's in front of you for the first time. It looks different. It feels different. And it's a beautiful place to be. You no longer see obstacles and challenges as roadblocks that are preventing you from going where you need to go. But you actually see roadblocks as guiding you. They're detours. They're showing you that this is the better way. And now that you're aligned with your energy, you're aware of it. You're not looking at things through their sight. You know, it's seeing without sight. You're feeling it. You're tapping into your intuition. You're sitting with yourself. You're feeling your gut and sacral response. And it's through this that we begin the process of deconditioning. It's not something that happens overnight. It's something that we constantly work at. But as we do this, we move into our authentic selves, who we're meant to be. You know, the conditioned person, when they talk to you, they're not going to necessarily understand it. And the conditioned person is going to see what's in front of them. And they're going to continue to challenge your beliefs. But if you know who you are and you know who you're meant to be, you won't waver. You'll stand firm in your beliefs because you know that you're constantly being guided towards what's meant for you and what's best for you. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Please feel free to comment, like, and subscribe. Thank you.